Among the most well-known reactions of aldehydes and ketones is called nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl. The carbonyl carbon has a partial positive charge because of the electronegative property of oxygen. Thus, a variety of nucleophiles become attracted to this carbonyl carbon. Because of its sp2 hybridization, the central carbon has a trigonal planar arrangement. Thus, a nucleophile may attack at the top or at the bottom in a one-to-one -one probability. There are, however, compounds wherein this one-to-one -one attack is not possible. In this case, for camphor, there are very big groups around this area which will lower the probability of attack of a nucleophile at this phase and will increase the preference of a nucleophilic attack at the bottom phase. If your nucleophile is strong, this will form a tetrahedral alkoxide on the attack. And if the R groups are different, the carbonyl carbon will become a chiral center. However, because of the equal chance of attack, the bottom and the top, the products will likely be a racemic mixture. An acid catalyst is used to facilitate reaction of weak nucleophiles with carbonyl groups. So protonation at this oxygen will directly generate the hydroxy groups. Nucleophilic addition is directly affected by both electronic and steric effects. The more electron poor the carbonyl carbon, the more reactive it is to nucleophiles. If we are to compare ethanol and acetone, ethanol has only one methyl group. As you know, the carbonyl carbon is partially positive and the approach of a nucleophile depends on the intensity of this positive charge. A methyl group is known to donate electrons by hyperconjugation. A donation can reduce the intensity of this positive charge. Comparing it to acetone, there are two methyl groups here, and so there are two groups that will donate electrons, reducing the intensity of this positive charge. In our case, Ethanol should be more reactive. A less crowded transition state is more stable, lowering the energy of activation. Comparing ethanol and acetone, the transition state involving acetone must be more crowded because it has two methyl groups compared to ethanol. So ethanol reaction should be faster by this measure. To generalize, aldehydes are usually more reactive than ketones. Aromatic aldehydes and ketones are less reactive than aliphatic aldehydes and ketones. The aliphatic aldehydes are those aldehydes which has alkyl groups. The reason for this is because the phenyl ring is a good electron donating group and it can effectively reduce the intensity of the positive charge at this carbonyl carbon. The first type of nucleophilic addition that I will describe is cyanohydrin formation or the formal addition of HCN to aldehydes and ketones. In basic medium, the cyanide ion is the nucleophile and this cyanide will attack the carbonyl carbon. You will form a tetrahedral alkoxide and this is the slow step. The next step is the protonation of this oxygen to give you the cyanohydrin. The cyanohydrin involves a cyano group attached to a carbon for which a hydroxyl group is also attached. This can also work in acidic medium. Here the oxygen is protonated first before the attack of the cyanide on the carbonyl carbon. Upon protonation you will have an oxygen that is positively charged and as I mentioned before this oxygen will be more electronegative and it will attract the cyanide and attack the carbonyl carbon and you will form your cyanohydrin. Now which one is better? It is important to note that this is a trusic acid which is rather toxic. It is common for this type of reaction to use potassium cyanide 
in the presence of catalytic sulfuric acid to bring the pH to about 4 to 5. In that case, potassium cyanide is easier to handle. Once you form your cyanohydrin, it can be hydrolyzed in acidic condition. One example is to use 95% sulfuric acid and you can convert it to a carboxylic acid. A basic condition will also work. You will form a carboxylate and addition of an acid, in this case, will give you the carboxylic acid. There's a further reaction that may occur if you heat this up, you can dehydrate it, for example, with sulfuric acid to form an alpha-beta unsaturated compound. A reducing agent such as lithium aluminum hydride can reduce cyanohydrin to beta amino alcohol. As you know, cyanohydrin has a C triple bond N. This is a reducing agent. It will add hydrogen to carbon and nitrogen. And ultimately, you will produce a beta amino alcohol. Next one is the addition of alcohols. You form hemiacetals and acetals in this case. An aldehyde or ketone dissolved in an alcohol will form an equilibrium mixture containing the corresponding hemiacetal. Oxygen has lone pairs and can act as nucleophile. If you have a small amount of an acid, your acid can protonate this oxygen and the attack will occur to this carbon to give you the hemiacetal. A hemiacetal has a hydroxy group and an alkoxy group attached to the same carbon. In this example, I use an aldehyde. What about if you use a ketone? An example here is acetone. Using the same condition, you will get a carbon attached to an ethoxy group and a hydroxy group. A term used in older literature is hemiketal to describe this type of compound. Ketal means that this compound came from a ketone. Cetal means that this compound came from an aldehyde. However, the IUPAC now discourages the use of hemiketal and considers that all of these compounds are hemiacetals. Hemiacetal formation is catalyzed by either acid or a base. So I've shown you an acid catalyzed hemiacetal formation. Generally, acyclic hemiacetals are unstable, but five and six membered cyclic hemiacetals are stable. Here is an example of the formation of a cyclic hemiacetal. We have a hydroxy group at position number five and a carbonyl group at position one. This hydroxy group in the presence of an acid or a base can attack this carbonyl carbon and form a cyclic molecule. This is more stable than the acyclic compound. Aldehydes or ketones in water form an equilibrium with its hydrate or a geminal diol, gem diol. If you put your aldehyde in water, you will get this structure wherein two hydroxy groups are attached to the same carbon. This is a hydrate. For a ketone, you will also produce a hydrate or a gem diol. An aldehyde or a ketone in excess alcohol and an acid catalyst will form an acetal. So if you have your aldehyde and you add your ethanol in the presence of an acid, you will readily form a hemiacetal and the presence of an acid can protonate this hydroxy group. This protonation will give you the OH2. This is a good leaving group. So lone pairs on oxygen in the ethoxy group can form a double bond, which will cleave the bond to OH2 to release a water molecule. You will get an oxonium ion. This oxonium ion can interact with another molecule of your ethanol to form your acetal. Acetal involves two alkoxy groups that are attached to the same carbon. If you start from a Ketones such as acetone, in the presence of excess ethanol, for example, in an acid, you will form a ketal. 
ketal is again similar to acetal, you have two ethoxy groups or two alkoxy groups attached to the same carbon. Again, the use of ketal is presently discouraged by IUPAC. The new rules states that both this structure and this structure are considered acetals. Acetals are stable when isolated and purified. However, an excess of water with an acid catalyst will hydrolyze an acetal back to the aldehyde or ketone. So for the case of the compound that uh, we generated earlier, if you put it in an aqueous acid, take note that water must be present for this to work, you will convert it back to your aldehyde. This property is very useful in chemical synthesis. So for example, you have a 1,2-diol in the presence of an acid. This can react with your carbonyl group. The carbonyl group can be transformed to a cyclic acetal. This is very stable. The purpose of adding a cyclic acetal to our compound is to protect it. So you can use a reagent such as hydrogen and platinum to reduce this double bond here. And then when this compound is exposed to an aqueous acid, you will get back your carbonyl group. So overall, you are able to reduce the double bond here, but keep the carbonyl group intact. Acetals formed from ketones and simple alcohols are less favorable than those from aldehydes. Again, the reason for this is that the formation of acetals from ketones involves a more crowded transition state. Another nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl is the addition of derivatives of ammonia. The G here can be a variety of several groups. I will mention them later. The reaction with primary amines and ammonia give amines. Primary amines are those compounds wherein your nitrogen is directly bonded to only one carbon. In this case, the lone pair of nitrogen can attack the carbonyl carbon and you will form this type of compound. At pH 4.5, this can be protonated and protonated further to give the OH2 functionality. Further interaction with the base, such as the amine itself, can remove this proton. The electrons present between nitrogen and hydrogen will form a double bond and this will cleave the bond to oxygen, removing water as your leaving group. And eventually, you will get your imine. In the case of secondary amines, such as this one, a nitrogen attached to two carbons. Again, the nitrogen can attack at this carbonyl carbon. Protonation of the oxygen will leave you a possible leaving group. There's a lone pair on nitrogen that can form a double bond. Cut this bond here. The water molecule will depart and you will get a positively charged nitrogen. This species is unstable. The problem here, if you would compare to this one, is that there is no hydrogen bonded to this nitrogen. So this positive charge will endure. To stabilize this compound, your base can take a proton that is present at the beta position. The electrons connecting this proton to the carbon will form the double bond. Electrons will go back to nitrogen and you will form your enamine. This is called an enamine because you have your amine moiety and you have your double bond. So this is an in and this is an amine, so enamine. There are many derivatives of amines that can work other than alkyl amines. You can use hydroxylamine, hydrazine, your arylamine, for example, aniline, and semicarbazide. This part will be the one to react with the carbonyl carbon. 
Ringer reagents are also known to react with the carbonyl carbon via nucleophilic addition. The Ringer reagents add to aldehydes and ketones to form secondary and tertiary alcohols. This R group, negatively charged, can attack this carbon and upon protonation will give you an alcohol. An aldehyde will give a secondary alcohol and the ketone will give a tertiary alcohol. You need an acid workup to convert the intermediate alkoxide to the alcohol. Take note that Grignard reagents can also act as a base if ketone is hysterically hindered, leading to an enolate. I will describe enolates in another video.